Matt Jesus on a pilgrimage, still walking. I'm Andy Doyle, the Bishop of Texas, and that's my six-word autobiography. My hope for this podcast is to walk with you and talk with you about God, the church, and where we're headed next. So as we come to our gospel lesson today, there seems to be a bit of confusion about rich people getting saved. The assumed answer being no from every quarter. The religious response to this was to ask Jesus, well then who can be saved? And all of this kind of sets up both the parables that we've had over the last few weeks in our story today. We might remember a recent parable that Jesus told about a rich man who goes to hell uh, named Dives, which means rich man going to hell, uh, and Lazarus, the poor man, and he wanted him to continue to serve him. And I'm not going to rehash that parable, but it's a good reminder to keep in our rearview mirror and to remember that the point actually wasn't that rich people uh, all go to hell, but that all people who don't practice giving themselves to others in this life will find it difficult to give themselves over to God in the next. Zacchaeus, uh, found only in Luke's gospel, was a chief tax agent. He is a very rich man, similar to other rich men named in Luke's gospel. Only sentences away, weeks away in Sunday time, the blind blind folks who could not see uh, are healed, and they follow Jesus, uh, and they know the Messiah before they even receive their sight. And we're meant to pause here as we begin our story with Zacchaeus and ask the question, uh, is, can the blind, uh, because he's rich, uh, gain his sight as well? Will he be able to see who Jesus is, and will his faith make him well? Jesus, who is seeking the blind and the lost, stops under that sycamore tree where Zacchaeus perches and says, I'm going to come and dwell with you. That's actually the translation of the word. I'm going to dwell, I'm going to remain I'm kind of under your roof today, Zacchaeus man. And Zacchaeus uh, sees Jesus uh, and has him over for tea, evidently, as the children's song goes. Uh, People around Jesus, though, do not like this. Uh, The crowd grumbles and they murmur. That's the worst, murmuring against Jesus. Why? Because Zacchaeus is a rich man. Surely, rich men don't deserve to have Jesus come under their roof. As a rich man, he's clearly a sinner. He's a tax collector, after all. And tax collectors are, of course, beloved only by a small minority of people who they collect for. In those days, the tax collector collected some seven layers of taxes from the day laborer. They also kept from the total of that money for themselves. They were responsible for making and creating their own income. So you had the tax, but then you also took money from people so that you could support your livelihood. So it's easy to say that tax collectors are takers and not givers. Zacchaeus is not an ordinary tax collector, we find out, because as soon as he sees Jesus, he repents. And he says, I, I, I see you, and you're coming under my house. You want to actually be, under, you care about me. And he responds to that by making an amendment of life. Half of his possessions to the poor. And if he's cheated anybody, which he probably has, he will make restitution. Zacchaeus uh, meets him and is transformed in that meeting. And he believes if you will, before we ever get to the cross. He has a faith in Jesus' teaching and that this transforms his life to be a giver. He's a wealthy person making a difference or who will make a difference in the lives of others. The Christian rule of life includes giving. Giving money, giving food, giving clothing, giving shelter, giving of ourselves. Sometimes we don't want to talk about it. But there is no way around it. (laughs) The very basis of Christianity is worshiping Jesus who gives all of himself for the world. 
We cannot ignore giving as a basic practice of what it means to be a human who follows Jesus. Now, the story is not a moral story. It's not about being good so that you can get into heaven. That's not what this is about. It's not a kind of exchange. I'll give, and then I get into heaven. Rather, as we've seen over the last couple of weeks, that that is foolishness. And what we understand is that only God saves. Our response of giving is one to the Jesus who hangs on the cross and saves us. It is in response to eternal life promise. It is in response to a God who has created all things and given us a place among them. And by doing so, preparing ourselves to give ourselves to God. That's chiefly the work here. God is wholly other. We like to think about Jesus. Jesus we love. We love Jesus. We're really not sure about God. Right? God is just so different and stands so far away. It's wholly other. We, that, that mysterium tremendum is a fancy word of describing our angst when we think about God. And so imagine that the work of giving is actually a preparing us spiritually for giving ourselves over to this God who is wholly other. A practiced life of servanthood and giving to others prepares us for a life of God. It turns our worldly understanding of justice on its head because the answer to who can be saved is everybody. Rich and poor people get saved. Not because they're rich or poor, but because God loves them both. That being saved isn't about us. We are given that as gift. And that in this world, we need to prepare for the next by learning how to give and share. After all, you're going to be stuck with each other forever. <laughs> My wife, I'm not going to tell that joke. <laughs> My wife is pretty sure she's going to be stuck in the U-Haul line with all of her hated political enemies. <laughs> And that may actually be true. (laughs) But what I really want to end on is this. Every good bit, every good work, big or small, in this life actually makes a difference. Because it is an icon of the God who in Jesus gives all. No matter what we have, a little bit or a lot, when we give, there is a never-ending, widening circle of good. And that good changes the world that we live in, in big ways and little ways. And it is maintained as a jewel in the kingdom of heaven forever. So we're invited in Zacchaeus to not be so worried about God coming under our roof for God's already there, but rather to figure out how we're going to respond and maybe this year be a little bit more of a giver than a taker. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Thank you for listening. Join me in conversation on Twitter at Texas Bishop and spread the word about this podcast by leaving a review on iTunes. Thank you.